Hello and welcome to another adventure with Badger. Now it's not going to be much of an adventure of touring around, but it is going to be day 4,000 miles review of Badger. Um, coinciding with a big overhaul I'm doing now. Fair enough, I should do a overhaul at 3,750 miles, but I just got a little bit over it because I had to wait for my oil. Right? Um, reason that I waited for my oil is I'm using 15W50 full synthetic right um, I switched to that or actually start using it with the first maintenance schedule for breaking in the bike uh, bike has been running beautifully and uh, if something works well why change um, unfortunately the supplier didn't have anything in stock so I had to wait a week which you know, it's not bad. A week, a week. It's doable. So I got my oil. Um, I've got from Hitchcock Motorcycles 19 to France Procket. So we're going to put that one in. That is going to reduce the RPM with about 500 RPM at, um, at the higher speeds. So um, especially since I'm driving a lot on the motorway, I'm going back and forth to work every day during the week. Um, my speed will be up to 100, 110 kilometers an hour. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like, yeah, that's kind of high revving in the range. With a 19 tooth, I hope to like bring it down 500 RPMs, you know, and have the engine uh, run a little bit smoother that way. Not expecting big speed of it. Um, I've seen some reviews of people that done the same. So big shout out to iRide and Tass. Um, thank you for pioneering this for me because I've been checking out all your, your, your videos. So um, this is going to be put on as well. So it's going to be an oil change, oil filter, uh, basically checking out the entire bike. And uh, we're going to be cleaning the chain as well. Um, then, of course, um, 4,000 miles. Now, how has it been going for the Royal Enfield, for Badger? All right, okay, now in terms of reliability, <clears throat> I didn't have a single instance where I had a critical failure. So other, other than that, there, there's been no failures on the bike. I've been riding it through sunshine and, uh, and rainy weather. Now our sunshine, you know, it's not gonna be like India. So like I didn't experience any overheating issues or anything like that. Um, there seems to be a rumor around that uh, as soon as the Royal Enfield gets wet um, that it cuts out. I can tell you there is no truth in that. Like, let me debunk that straight away. Um, because this, this is Ireland and if it rains, it rains and it will rain every day. And I, I had like whole months that coming out of work, clock time, four o'clock, the heavens start opening up. And by the time I got home, the water was in my boots, right? Badger didn't give a fuck. It just kept going. So, you know, right. Uh, another thing, vibration. I do want to touch on that because um, about a, a little bit more than a month ago, I ordered this um, vibration reduction plate. Um, I think they were by, oh, I forgot the name of the manufacturer's. Carberry, Carberry, right? I ordered that, um, and I was hoping to, you know, put it in with this uh, maintenance schedule as well. Uh, but after I ordered it, I didn't hear anything for three weeks. Then I poked him over the email. It's like, dudes, what's up? So I ordered this three weeks ago. Like, I don't even have like a tracking number. Um, I did not get a response from them, but the next day I got a response from uh, you know, some, some, some parcel company said like, oh, your item has just been shipped. So they've been, basically been sitting on that order for three weeks um, and I needed to poke them and they couldn't even get back to me personally. So I still don't have it. So it's not go, go not going to go in. Uh, but thinking about it, okay. Is the um, vibration reduction plate really necessary in my case? All right. So 
you know, there's f f Royal Enfields, yeah, they vibrate, you know, there's like people talk about it, they, they, they vibrate and there's a whole discussion about, oh, mine vibrates a lot, mine, you know, it's, it's, it's okay, you know, what, what, what's going on there, and, you know, that's where this uh, vibration reduction plate by Carberry Motorcycles came up and saying like, okay, well, this is maybe a viable solution. But, you know, then I started thinking, it's like, okay, you know, while I was waiting for something to happen with, with, with the shipment from Carberry Motorcycles, I'm going like, well, how bad is the vibration really on Badger? And yeah, it, 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 you know, it's going to vibrate when you get, you know, constantly 100, 110, right? And I'm going like, but how bad is the vibration? It is not worse than on my Marauder 800. Actually, it's less, right? And putting in that 19 tooth sprocket is going to bring down the RPM by 500. So I am not going to lose any sleep on it. That plate might come in tomorrow, might come in next week. Um, it's all going to depend on um, how things work out with the 19 tooth. Um, it might be perfect after that. And, you know, it's like, I'm. Um, I'll get to the plate whenever I feel like it and might even decide to say to hell of it I don't need it right because if something works why fix it so um, right back to Badger so what we have on the operating table is of course the tools left um, and I've taken off the side stand and the brake pedal and the kickstart and of course all the oily things I have screwed out and I like to keep my bolts and nuts all in one place. I don't like them to wander. So basically what we're looking at is I've taken the exhaust off and you think like, okay, well that's a weird thing to do to change a, uh, a front sprocket, but yeah, you have to. Um, and that's the only big question mark I had um, with the bike is that you actually have to remove uh, get on my knees the engine cover to get to the front sprocket that's behind it so basically you know if you plan to do this you gotta drain your oil well it was time for an oil change, change anyway so and as you can see i have been busy taking the air filter out taking the kickstarter out taking um, the footrest out so it can all come come off and of course the footrest won't come off until the exhaust is off now fortunately it's not a very hard job you just I just loosen this bolt here and two bolts there it just clean comes clean off so it's it's not like a nightmare uh, uh, a scenario as you would have like with some of the Japanese bikes where everything just fits perfectly and going through strange strange bends so we basically got everything prepped so what we'll do now is uh, we're going to get this cover off and uh, and get started with uh, changing that front sprocket and getting that chain off okay so we got everything off um, and like i said i was looking to disconnect the cable but I had a quick look and saw the connector was way behind the electronic panel and having to get that off it was just like too much of a hassle so I just improvised and got this old bungee cord uh, just to take it out of the way we got the new sprocket on there um, had a bit of an issue of getting that pulled off because it's a, it's a 46 millimeter and actually had to rush out go to the shop and get this yoke and uh, well it will come in handy so we got this old big old pipe wrench uh, didn't uh, you didn't have to put much force on it so you know that's good so we put it uh, back on um, I've been cleaning up and removing the old gasket uh, it broke as I came off but that's no problem I've got a liquid gasket for the ready so I will apply a liquid gasket here but first we're going to put the chain on which I have been cleaning and it has been <coughs> hanging over there
drying, cleaned it with diesel and then uh, used a lubrication that's supposed not to fling off. But as you can see, chain is nice and clean. And this is the stuff that I used. PDL Profi Dry Lube. It's supposed to uh, stay on a bit better. It doesn't fling off. So we'll get to that then. And uh, while the cover is off, I'll show you where that vibration reduction place is supposed to go and it should supposed to go here this is the plate so you have to get the flywheel off and then replace it and it will have an extra bearing here right behind the flywheel but as I explained earlier I mean I'm like I'm, I'm not having too much complaints about vibration um, with Badger and uh, the bigger front sprockets will reduce the RPMs at higher speeds, so probably just be the best. Like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, so I'm going to move to put the chain on, and then uh, then we'll close up and uh, close all the plugs and fill her up with oil, and then she's good for another three thousand miles. There's another thing I uh, I need to mention because it caused quite a panic um, because it appears if you have the other cover off there is a certain amount of play on this axle and I don't know what happened but I was like trying to get it into gears and suddenly it just fell the, the whole thing just fell down limp and I could only switch gears up and it just fell down limp and I actually actually had to wiggle and move wiggle and move and figured like there's some kind of fork system in there that catch into something pretty much like the marauder and I managed to get it back but it's uh, it's one of the things that I'm going to be aware about that every time that cover is off you can actually move this and uh, it can go inwards and then for some reason it falls out of the gear fork and uh, that had me freaked out for a bit but um, and I was worried I had to like take this whole side off now it, you know like okay that's maybe 15 minutes works but um, you know it's uh, I solved it by just finding where it should be and uh, I'm only going to put the bolt in when the other side is on and then uh, you know one of those little things you, you learn while you go along I wonder how many people have come across something like that. I mean, I was just trying to like put it into gear to, uh, you know, give it some uh, some resistance for getting the bolt off the front sprocket off, and then that just happened. It just fell down and went limp, and that really freaked me out. But okay, it seems all sorted now. So, all right, back to putting the chain on. So all in all. Um, bad things to say about badger you know um more a particularity if i pronounce that right um when you start her up in the mornings and she's cold and even if you like you know let her run for a couple of minutes if you put it straight into first gear she will kind of make a jump on it right Kind of like shudders a bit and uh, it's a very simple remedy for that and it's just like engaging the clutch and just revving the bike just once you know a little rev uh, and I think it has to do something with, with, with the plates with the type of plates she has um, but they just need to loosen up because if you don't do that they stick and you <laughs> you notice that when you put her into gear uh, other than that um, there is one thing I wish they've done differently, right? And that all has to do with the fuel. All right, so let's have a look around here. So the particularity with the fuel cap, right? Now, I've put on 
a different fuel cap um, with a lock and I don't know about you but I just feel a little bit better that whenever I leave Badger unattended nobody can mess around with the fuel tank but here's a thing that you know kind of bugs me a little bit is when I take off the fuel cap and you look inside right this there's this insert right and the, there's just a tiny little hole in there and if you want to get at the fuel pump and you want to stick that nozzle in there what happens is usually the nozzle just cuts off because the gasoline can't flow quickly enough so I have to kind of like angle it in an odd position um, that's the only bugbear that I would have about this bike so other than that um, quite happy with it um, another thing that I noticed recently is the exhaust that I got um, so I, this is not a Royal Enfield exhaust this is an uh, what was it an AEW or something like that the powder coating is not that really great you can see it here I had it bits chipped off here and just recently here as well and I just touch it up with uh, high temperature matte spray just to keep it from rusting so that's the only thing that I would have noticed and I would have expected that actually the powder coating here would like get the most nicks but that seems to be in, in, in really good shape so Royal Enfields themselves got the powder coating done pretty good it's just this AEW aftermarket pipe yeah that could have been just a little bit better um, another thing that I changed recently is when I got the seat uh, it had a bracket with it and I wasn't really happy with it so I kind of like made a new bracket and kind of like based it on the old saddle I got this piece off it and like made it fit um, I used the original springs of the saddle but it kind of tilted back a bit too much I was kind of feeling like I was sliding off so I had a look with the springs that were delivered with the saddle and they were actually a bit longer so I put them in now and you know it's it's you don't have that feeling you're sliding off the saddle anymore so that's basically it that's uh, we've covered like all the accessories um, I've got the map switch here which uh, was my latest install on it and we got the uh, piggyback ECU in here just give it a quick open up so here's the piggyback right we've got a uh, high performance air filter in here KNS and then of course the AW, uh, AEW uh, short bottle and that def definitely gave the bike a bit more of a oomph which justifies putting the bigger front sprocket on it. So, let's take her out and give you a driving impression because I haven't actually made a video with all the newest, latest mods and modifications done to her.